Hey there, Oasis Youth. This is Youth Pastor Sam. Uh, I'm recording this here in the morning, so I'm just enjoying my morning cup of coffee. Hope you uh, are enjoying yours as well, or I enjoyed yours already this morning. Uh, please excuse my voice. I, I'm dealing with a little bit of a cold. I don't think it's COVID. It's just a cold that developed this, this last week, and it's not fun, but I'll get over it. Anyways, uh, I wanted to share a quick covational with you today, right? This this week is known as Passion Week. Passion Week is the time between, it's the week between Palm Sunday and Easter Friday and Easter Sunday. Good Friday and Easter Sunday, <laughs> right? <coughs> and so... It's a very important week. We call it Passion Week because it's full of passion, right? Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Passion of the Christ, it gets the name Passion because of the intensity, the intensity and the passion that led Jesus to the cross, right? That led Jesus to die for our sake. So today, what I want to unpack is uh, one of the titles that we give to Jesus, right? We give him the title of Christ, right? You might be surprised to know that, that Christ is not Jesus's, Jesus's last name, right? It's Jesus of Nazareth. That's, that's his official name, right? As people knew him, saw him, we go, this is Jesus of Nazareth, which Jesus is a fairly significant name. Right? Jesus means Yeshua in Hebrew, which translates to God saves. Right? What an incredible name. Very telling. But the other name that we give him, right? Jesus Christ, is not a name. It's actually a title. And that title translates as Messiah. Messiah is a Jewish understanding. It's a, Jude a Jewish uh, statement it's a Jewish uh, it's kind of a it, it's it, it's a role that was to be fulfilled by somebody uh, somebody specific and in fact if you read the entire Old Testament you will come across certain certain descriptions describing a role that could be understood as a messianic role Right when you look in Genesis chapter three, we get this image of a descendant of Eve is going to step on the snake's face, and the snake's going to bite this descendant's heel. We get that image uh, with Abraham. We get an image of through you all people will be blessed. And Moses, we're told that a greater prophet will come, and he'll be greater than Moses. Right, so throughout the entire Bible, you get this, this imagery of a messianic role. Somebody who is supposed to save, right? Messiah, simply translated, means an anointed one. Someone who has been picked or designated for a role. And so that person, as, uh, as the Israelites were, were coming to, to understand who this Jesus of Nazareth was, they began to believe this was... God's anointed one, God's chosen Messiah, the one designated for this role, the one who was going to crush the, the snake who we believe is Satan, who's going to be a, uh, who's going to be fulfilling the role of Abraham, who's going to be a greater prophet than even Moses, that this Jesus person was a big deal who had a big role to fill. But something that they didn't anticipate was that part of Jesus' role was not just to be a conquering king, but his role was also to be a humble servant. And so we find in the book of Isaiah, one of my favorite passages to, to read through in Passion Week, in the book of Isaiah, he talks about this suffering servant. In Isaiah 53, Starting in verse 4, this is what Isaiah is saying about some servant figure that we now understand is meant to talk about the Messiah. This is what he says. He says, Surely 
not Shirley like the name, don't call me Shirley, right? Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us That doesn't sound very messianic, does it? It doesn't sound very triumphalistic. In this week that we call Passion Week, the people of Jerusalem, the Israelites of Jerusalem, they didn't know that this was also meant to be about Jesus. What they considered Jesus to be about was to come into Jerusalem, to throw out everything in the temple, to throw over the entire government, and to rule over it all. But Jesus had a different plan. And I'm very thankful he had a different plan. Jesus' goal was that he would continue to talk about what God was doing in and through him for the sake of you and for the sake of me. And that plan eventually led to on Monday, Thursday, which is this Thursday, Jesus being betrayed by one of his closest friends, being being slandered in a court, and being condemned to die on a cross. Isaiah puts it like this, that he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. Can you imagine this? That before the beginning of the world even began, there was a cross in the heart of God. That before, before you were even made, God already knew you and he loved you so much that he came down to be pierced for our transgressions. That he was crushed for our iniquities. He was chosen. He was chosen by God to be the Savior of the world. So as, as we approach this Passion Week, I encourage you, dig into the story. Right? Re read it through. We have four different accounts of Passion Week. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you are with us in the Bible plan, we are looking through the, the Gospel of Mark right now. And if you want to be a part of that, let me know. I can send you an invite right away. But we're looking at the Passion Week, and I encourage you to be be encaptured by the story. Right? This is a real account of a man who endured so much hardship, so much strife, so much persecution for you and for me. And we want to make sure that we are acknowledging that, and that we have received it in our lives, and that we're living it out for the world to see. So Lord, uh, I just I, I just pray over everyone who's who's listening to this podcast or not this podcast but this covational. Uh, I pray that you'd be encouraging to them, and that that as they read through this week, what you went through for our sake, that there would be a sense of uh, that there there be a sense of passion renewed in us, a passion for knowing what all that you went through for our sake. And that we'd be stirred up by, uh, by the love that you have for us. And that we would feel compelled to live for you in our own homes with our families. So be with us this week um, as we lift you up, as we focus on you and what you did. In Jesus' name we pray.